Okay, welcome to part two of this video on um, making solutions. And we're looking at the energy changes in solution. And what we're trying to do right now is calculate this quantity called the lattice energy. And that's defined in the last video, so you should watch that first. So what we're going to do is create a cycle, a thermodynamic cycle, that will allow us to calculate this lattice energy. So let's start here. So we've got our sodium solid plus a half mole of Cl2. Ultimately, I want to convert these guys into sodium cations and chloride anions. So we want to think about the processes that we need to do to make that happen. So as a first step, what I'm going to do is take these sodium atoms and I'm going to pull them apart and we're going to convert them into gas phase sodium. So I'm breaking bonds, so I'm going uphill in energy. So I've got to add energy to make that happen. So now I've separated these sodium atoms. So here they are separated from each other now as a gas. So I've made Na gas plus and the half mole of Cl2 just kind of comes along from the for the ride. So the chlorine molecules, they're still here. I haven't done anything to them. The enthalpy has gone up though because now I've pulled the sodium atoms apart. So what is that process? Well, when you go from a solid to a gas, that process is called sublimation. So this is delta H. So we're making a change in enthalpy. We're going from this level to this level. So what is that change? Well, it's called delta H of sublimation. So I'm just going to abbreviate sub for sublimation. So energy has gone in. This is an endothermic process. So the sign on this delta H will be positive. We have to put energy in to pull these guys apart. Okay, so there's one step in the process. So delta H of sublimation is a quantity that we can either measure or look up in tables for sodium. So the next step, I need to convert these chlorine atoms, because remember I'm trying to get up here to chloride anions. I need to pull these chlorine molecules apart. So that's going to be my next step. So I'm going to draw another line. We're putting in energy because we're breaking covalent bonds now. What we're going to end up with are separated chlorine atoms. So I've broken the bonds between the Cl atoms and the Cl2 molecules. And the sodium atoms that we've already pulled apart into the gas phase, they just kind of come along for the ride. So there they are. We'll write down underneath what we've got now. We've got sodium gas plus now a half mole of, uh, not a half mole. Now we've got, we've broken these up. So we've got one, two, three, four. We've got four moles of Cl atoms. Okay, that's what you get when you break a half mole of Cl2. So what is this process? Well, that involves bond breaking. So the delta H there is delta H sub BE for bond enthalpy. That's the amount of energy you have to put in to break one mole of bonds. Now, we're not breaking one mole of bonds because we only have a half mole of CO2. So to make this conversion correct, we're going to multiply by one half. Why do we do that again? Because this is the energy to break one mole of a certain kind of bond. And we've only got a half mole of those bonds because of the stoichiometry. So we have to multiply this number, which we can measure or look up in a table, by one half. Okay, so that's good. We're getting closer to this sodium plus chloride. Now the next step that we have to do, we need to make sodium cations. So what I'm going to do is put in a whole bunch of energy. So I'm going to draw a big line up here. There we go. And we're going to pull the electrons off those sodium cations. So we're going to pull those electrons off. So now what I've made is a whole bunch of sodium cations, Na+, plus, Na+, plus, Na+, plus, Na+. Plus. Then I'm going to draw some little dots here. One, two, three, four. And those are the electrons that we've ripped off. The chlorine atoms now come along for the ride. Here they are. And so now we've got our sodium cations in the gas phase. And you know, I wrote four down here. That's because I was counting these four, but we started off with a half mole. We've broken the bond, so we end up with only one mole of chlorine. So I didn't actually represent how many we have here, okay? So ignore that bit. So we've got one mole of chlorine. So that one mole of chlorine just comes along for the ride. So here it is, one mole of chlorine atom gas right there. Okay, so what is that process? Well, removing one electron 
from the valence shell of an atom is what we call the first ionization energy. So we're going to call that IE for ionization energy. We're going to put a subscript 1 because we're just taking off the first electron from the valence shell of that sodium. So that's IE1. So we have to do that for these sodium atoms. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take these electrons and we're going to stick them onto the chlorines. Now most of the time when you stick an electron into the valence shell of an atom, it feels the pull on that nucleus. So it's actually a little bit more stable. So when you lower something's energy by making it more stable, it's got to release that energy somewhere. So this, it turns out, is an exothermic process. So we're going to stick an electron onto the chlorine atoms to make chloride anions right there. And what is that process called? Well, again, we can measure that. And it's called the electron affinity, Ea. So we're going to call that Ea sub 1 because that's the energy to put, that's the energy released when we put one electron onto the chlorines. And again, you can look that up. Okay, now you see we have a pathway that lets us go from energy step to energy step all the way around this circle. So that's our cycle called the born haber cycle again. And what we do is we know all of these energies we can measure or look up delta H is of formation, delta H of sublimation, bond energies for chlorine, ionization energies, and electron affinities. And then the one energy that we don't know is the lattice energy. 